गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस चैप्टर वन क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ क्लास एट सब्जेक्ट साइंस दिस इज योर लेक्चर वन एज द नेम सिम्बनाइज क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट सो वी विल स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन ऑफ क्रॉप और यू कैन से वट इज क्रॉप क्रॉप वेन प्लांट ऑफ सेम काइंड आर ग्रोन एंड कल्टिवेटेड एट वन प्लेस ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल ओके सो द प्लांट्स ऑफ सेम काइंड आर ग्रोन एंड कल्टिवेटेड मीन सेम सेम काइंड प्लांट्स एंड दे आर ग्रोन एंड कल्टिवेटेड एट वन प्लेस ऑन अ सेम प्लेस बट ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल इज कॉल्ड अ क्रॉप सो यू कैन टेक एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एनी क्रॉप यू इफ यू हैव एवर विजिटेड टू एनी ऑफ द फार्म्स नियर बाय और टू द प्लेसेज वे आर द कल्टिवेशन इज गोइंग इफ यू हैव सीन एनी काइंड ऑफ फील्ड नियर बाय योर हाउस और वेन यू आर गोइंग टू द फ्रॉम द ट्रेन्स और फ्रॉम द बसेस सो दोज क्रॉप विच इज हैविंग द सेम काइंड ऑफ ग्रोन एंड द सेम काइंड ऑफ कल्टिवेशन ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल एज नोन एज क्रॉप फॉर एग्जाम्पल क्रॉप ऑफ व्हीट so wheat crop means that all the plants grown in that field will be particularly of wheat only okay there will be no uh, no kind of mixture that other crops are also going with them but they will be only about wheat so when when we talk about wheat that is a crop of particularly of wheat now after understanding the definition of crop we should also note that what are the type of crops we have in india so the type of crops we have are kharif crops and uh and rabi crops so we will uh, study about kharif crops right now the crops which are sown in the rainy season rainy season means monsoon season so the crops which are sown in rainy season are called kharif crops okay and example of those are paddy maize soya bean cotton etc so the crops which are sown in the rainy season are called kharif crops kharif crops are the rainy season crops now the second is the crops grown in the winter season the crops which grown in the winter seasons are rabi crops and f- uh, the example are wheat gram pea mustard linseed okay so here in the short form i have written that uh, the rainy season in india is from june to september and you can underline it and write kharif crops and winter season in india is from october to march these are rabi crops so these are kharif crops these are rabi crops okay easy to learn basic practices of crop production preparation of soil sowing adding manure and fertilizers irrigation protection from weeds these are five step there is two more steps okay the other steps are harvesting and storage as you can see the harvesting and storage okay so we are going to uh, discuss about all these things in detail the preparation of soil is the first point which we are going to discuss see the first step of growing a crop is preparation of soil if the soil is not prepared properly or the soil is not maintained properly then the crop will never grow properly so we will start with one of the most important task in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it we need to turn the soil and we need to loose the soil so turning and loosening the soil is the most important task in agriculture the loose soil allows the roots to breathe easily even when go deep into the soil okay uh, <clears throat> you can compare yourself with with the soil right now uh, for example if you have a very tight fitted clothes okay in those clothes uh, you are not able to breathe properly and or you can say you are not uh, you are not comfortable comfortable uncomfortableness is will be there if you are having the tight fitted clothes but when you wear loose fitted clothes okay when the when the clothes are little bit loose to you at that time it is very comfortable also and you are able to breathe also properly you are feeling okay with that so similarly with the soil if the soil is loose the roots will breathe properly okay and they even if they are going deep into the soil then also they will breathe properly and they will be comfortable okay the loosened soil help in the growth of earthworm and microbes so here when they are comfortable they have earthworms also they have microbes also earthworms you know they help in vermicomposting and microbes also have significant role for uh, like for preparing the soil properly like uh, bacteria i will give you example rhizobium okay it is there for nitrogen fixation also it helps in the fertility of the soil also these organisms are friends of the farmer so these organisms are basically what they are friends of the farmer and they help the farmer for the 
growth. Now next is tilling. The process of loosening and turning the soil is called tilling or plowing. Okay. So as I told you that preparation of soil is the most important step. So the now how we are going to prepare the soil? We are going to prepare the soil by tilling. Okay. Tilling is just turning the soil, loosening the soil. This is done by using a plow. Okay, this you must have observed if if you have seen any part of if you have a um, if you have a garden at your place or if you have small small earthen pots also. Okay, the in those also uh, for the primary for the putting the crop or putting the flower or anything we need to loosen and turn the soil. You must have observed your gardener must be doing it or someone in your family is doing this process. If you are uh, like planting trees or planting pl uh, plants that time now what is plow <clears throat> old days people used wooden plow there, there was a wooden plow for turning and tilling the soil but nowadays people are using iron plow and there is also an instrument known as hoe okay the simple tools, tool for removing weeds and for loosening the soil this these uh, plow hoe cultivator all these things are given in your ncrt also and uh, you can go through the diagrams given in your ncrt and uh, that will be more efficient for you if you go through the ncrts also now second is sowing sowing is the most important part of crop production okay before sowing seeds are selected before sowing seeds are selected we need to select the seeds properly because if the seeds are good then only the crop will the production will be good these are clean and healthy seeds of a good variety so these seeds are clean and healthy and they are of good variety okay so we need, the farmers need to sure this that the seeds are clean they are healthy and they are of good variety farmer need to think about all these things then only you can have those seeds sown in your uh, at, at your uh, field for the production of crop farmer prefer to use seeds which give a high yield okay they always prefer those seeds which will give a good yield because we are why the farmers are having crops for economical growth also for agriculture growth also and uh, all of the economy and agriculture everything is depending on that so if the yield is proper then only there is a use of putting those seeds in the field before sowing one of the one, one of most important is to know about the tools used for sowing seeds okay if you are going to start with sowing you should know what are the tools which are important for sowing so we will start off the ta type of the tools okay before what happened when <clears throat> in the old method they were traditional tools okay now what what are traditional tools which is used in old which is used in older times or that is used uh, in old old methods it is a tool shaped like funnel so it is like a funnel used traditionally for sowing seeds traditionally it was used for sowing seeds the seeds are filled into the funnel okay these seeds are filled into the funnel because this is look like a funnel and pass down through two or three pipes having sharp ends. so there is a sharp end and there those seeds are getting passed these ends pierce okay pierce means there is a hole into the soil and place seeds there so they do the pierce into the soil and those seeds are placed there into the soil second is seed drill we use seed drill nowadays you must have observed also if you have ever visited to a farm or to agriculture land okay seed drill nowadays seed drill is used for sowing with the help of tractors with the help of tractor seed drills are used and seeds are sown uniformly at proper distance and depths so these seed drills are used uniformly okay at proper distances and depth and uh, there is a uniformly uh, they are putting in the distance and there are proper depths also so that for that seed drills have been used it ensures that seed gets covered okay seed drill has a very a good application because it ensures that seeds are getting covered by the soil after sowing and prevents damage caused by birds see birds are basically eating the seeds whenever the seeds are being put but what is happening these seed drills are covering this uh, covering by the soil okay they are covering the seeds by the soil and what will happen if the soil is covered above the seeds the birds are properly covered then the birds can never eat it so it it, it save the time and it save the labor also adding manure and fertilizers the substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients 
okay for the healthy growth of plants are called manure and fertilizers so these are the substances we all need nutrients we all are living organisms like you need food and uh, you should uh, and like most of the time people say you to eat nutrition nutritional food okay like have fruits have good green leafy vegetables and there should be vitamins there should be nutrients inside it so it's not only about you it's about plants also because they are also living beings though they are autotrophic they are not heterotrophic i hope you know the uh, difference between autotrophic and heterotrophic autotrophic are those which prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight and green pigment chlorophyll so that are plants and heterotrophic heterotrophic are us we are depending on the other uh, things to for the food like for example we are depended on the plants we are dependent on the animal sources for our food so we all are heterotrophic so for these nutrition uh, if the plants also need nutrition though the soil is providing the nutri nutrition or nutrients to them but that is not uh, <clears throat> that, that that is very less in comparison so we also uh, also provide manure and fertilizers to them for providing more nutrients to the soil okay now we will know about the difference between the manure and fertilizers see what are manure manure are organic substances okay natural substances means organic substances no chemicals are uh, we are not putting any chemicals uh, out from outside so that is natural substances obtained by decomposition of cattle dung and plant residues okay so uh, man made in uh, uh, so, uh, like this is about manure so when we talk about fertilizers fertilizers and man made inorganic salt okay and when we come to manure manure can be prepared in fields manure can be prepared in fields and uh, fertilizers cannot be prepared in field uh, sorry manure can be prepared in fields and fertilizers can prepared in factories okay manure provide lot of humus hum, uh, humus to the soil okay fertilizers does not provide humus to the soil and then manure are less rich in plant nutrients fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so we are basically providing chemicals those are inorganic substances so the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium level is more but when we compare it to manure they are less but when we compare about the humus okay that humus is more in manure and it is very less in fertilizers okay so i hope you are clear with the differences between manure and fertilizers after this we will move to the advantages of manure what are the advantages of manure uh, organic manure is considered better than fertilizers we consider organic manure better than fertilizer it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil it also enhances the water holding capacity of the soil see water holding capacity is very important okay because if the water holding capacity is less then the soil is not good because uh, when we put water you know that for photosynthesis plants need water also sunlight also green pigment chlorophyll also okay so if we, if the water holding capacity of the soil is less then it will be very difficult uh, for the plant to grow properly because the water which is going to the soil is not getting holded by the soil properly so the water holding capacity should be more then coming to it makes the soil porous porous means permeable there are pores there there are holes in the soil and if the soil is porous then it will have good exchange of gases and uh, uh, it will be helpful in the uh, water also water going inside and <clears throat> penetrating inside that also will be good so it makes the soil porous due to exchange of gases become easy okay it increases the number of friendly microbes see microbes are are necessary for soil okay but which microbes are necessary friendly microbes which is good for soil okay it improves the texture of the soil it also improves the texture of the soil okay uh, <clears throat> till here only we will continue now i will tell you what will be your homework for uh, doing okay so you will do exercise question 1 2 3 in book and you will do question number 4 and 5 in your notebook okay and if you have any problem you can ask me and uh, for for tomorrow we will start with irrigation and uh, we i will discuss about what type of irrigation you have okay traditional method and uh, modern methods
थैंक यू